good morning, everyone. Good day. My kids told me to say that as much as possible, so. I'm very honored to be here with you today, uh, talking with Amplify. Thank you very much uh, to AMP and to Anna Lee and everyone here, all the hosts. It's been a wonderful time in Sydney so far. So I want to talk to you about the multi-platform storytelling space. This is a space that I've been very active in, and several of you that I've met while I've been here have also been dabbling in it a bit. And it's a very exciting time. You know, in the media space, in the marketing space, in the advertising space, there's a lot of depression out there. People are depressed, right? Jobs are going away, companies are shrinking, things like that. But from my perspective, it's actually a very exciting time because we're on this verge of, of rebirth. And isn't that what this festival is all about, celebrating rebirth? Okay? Let's see. So storytellers. We are all storytellers. It is part of the human experience, right? The whole idea about sharing stories, vocalizing stories, right? Whether you're here with the Native Americans or hanging out with Bruce down in King's Cross, right? That kind of thing, which I haven't done yet. Um, but you know what I mean? So it's the whole idea about verbalizing storytelling, right? It's part of the human fabric, right? And as we've evolved through history, it's expanded into other technologies, whether it's paint, art, things of that nature, across cultures, across society. And of course, today, a great deal of that is fueled through social media, which we'll talk a little bit about more later, right? And then, of course, here in Australia, you have a rich tradition of storytelling. Or this is Aboriginal art, which I've been coming to, to learn a great deal about. And so from that, I wanted to paint for you a little picture. Wonderful little picture of the world today, okay? So I want to start off with a question that I have. So, can you name one of the biggest new media advances of the 40s, which grew on a global scale, peaking in the 90s, and although in decline, still exists today? Can anybody think what that is? It is not television, okay? It is not radio. It is stereo view cards, okay? In 1900, pre-Thomas Edison, this was a billion dollar global new media business. On the back, it's printed in six different languages. This was cutting edge new media, pre-film. Most of the civilized world knew what a tiger looked like, knew what the pyramids looked like because of these cards. This was new media, international, global, billion dollar business. So if this is 1900, and in 1950 we have television, and you look at your phone today, where are we going to be in 20, 30 years? It's a very exciting time, right? Okay. And of course, it still exists today. That's the great grandson of the stereo view card, if you kids have one of those at home, all right? Okay, so one of the things that's interesting about this time is that it's not, it's not a traditional evolution, right? We're not, our storytelling isn't evolving from platform to platform to platform radio, film, TV, computer, and now mobile. It's really kind of this convergence of things, right? Because what's exciting about this time is the thing that you're going to hold in your hand in five years doesn't exist yet, and nobody really knows what it's going to do. And it's most certainly not going to just be a phone. And more and more, how many of us, when we travel on business, don't take our laptop anymore? Our tablet does everything we need, right? So it's a very, very exciting time, right? And goodness, if you hand a tablet to a child, look what they do with it. It's amazing, right? Where are we going to be? This is, the, uh, this is the, the consumer base that we're eventually going to be dealing with, right, in these next years to come, okay? So the digital space, right? The digital space we have, very often it's, it's the whole notion of can we get our audience to embrace us? The audience is already there. It is a hugely active space all throughout our day, right? Anybody that once you get them on to checking their email on their phone, they're there every day five times a day, right? There is that engagement. They are there. They are engaging, they are sharing, they are exploring, they are purchasing. It's a huge, huge act of space, one for us to take advantage of, okay? All right, the digital space in today's age is really one of true convergence, right? Content's gonna go from device to device. And storytellers and marketers are gonna be able to engage audiences where they live. But the exciting thing is, is that because of social media, it allows us, it allows the audience to take those messages and share them around the world, right? It's all about digital media and the collection of the media. In the next 20 years, you're gonna have a, something at your house that's gonna be as common as a water heater or an air conditioner, and it's gonna be a big hard drive. And there's gonna be this whole business of backing it up and a whole business of securing it. But all of our data, everything that we have, will be a central hub and part of our life, okay? All right. Now, the digital space and technology for storytellers. This is the exciting thing, right? How does technology take us along the way? How does it fuel us, right? Whether it's Mobile engagement through QR codes, things like that, uh, which of course is an intermediary technology. It's just one step along the way. A lot of people see that and they say, oh, that's, that's nothing. And obviously it's already morphing into to new forms. This is, a Q, this is called a Snap Tag, a company out of um, Denver. And this allows brand recognition within the tag, so it's like the next generation of this. And what eventually it'll become, it's all image recognition. It's augmented reality. 
and things of that nature, and, and GPS architected hotspots that allow us to engage audiences, right? Okay. All right. So it's a very exciting time. So the big thing about technology, technology is always in motion, okay? Do not think that that phone that you have, that new phone you got for Christmas, is the hottest thing, okay? Because it really isn't. Today's mobile phone is like Pong for gaming, if you remember <laughs> Pong, right? Or if you remember 8-track for music. This is Nathaniel's Dolly Parton CD, 8-track um, that he let me borrow. We can pass this around. This changed the movie business. I mean, excuse me, the music business, right? This was a huge, huge thing that they thought would change everything. And it was just a bump in the road, right? Music industry today is scrambling to figure out how they're going to engage people. The whole notion of giving away music, right? You go to Starbucks and they'll give you a card with a free song on it, right? It's all about the content being free. Nobody's really figured out the delivery models, the standardization, the monetization, okay? All right. And then, of course, what the mobile device is, is the world's new remote control, the center of our world, right? Because it's all about engagement. It's all about engaging your audience. And there's actually four different levels of engagement that I'm just going to quickly go through. The first is passive. And this is what we've mostly been dealing with over the last several years when you talk about media and advertising, right? I'm going to produce a movie. How do I know if people like it? They go to the movie theater. We've got box office or we've got TV ratings, OK? But there's a lot of things that can influence that. How is the film marketed? How wide is the release? How accessible is this film to the audience, right? This is something that's always kind of stood in our way, whereas now with the internet, the content is open to everyone, right? Although obviously there's a huge flood of content, so it's the whole notion of search and awareness, okay? Then you've got responsive content, right? The whole idea about questionnaires, direct mail, things like that, getting a sense of what people think, trying to take that and capture that market research to see if that how we can influence and better reach our audiences, okay? But then you've got the ability to influence, to really allow people to contribute to the story, to contribute to the product, to try to make things better, right? Getting feedback from people and evolving your business around that. And then what really is this new exciting space is the fully immersive story world. This is where you create the world and you allow audience, you give it to the audience and you allow them to engage it and take it wherever you want to go, right? That way they have full ownership in it. Very, very exciting time, okay? Because you, they can take it wherever they want, they can share it, and they can grow it, or they can kill it. Very often they can kill it, okay? All right. Storytelling empowered through technology. Really, really is a cutting edge thing. And the next 10 years is just gonna say, tell us so much, right? The sense of augmented reality, if you haven't played around with that, there's several companies that are doing that. Imagine if you take your Sunday newspaper, and they have the picture of the, the rugby game on the cover, and you take your tablet and you hold it over the, the Sunday paper, and all of a sudden the rugby game comes alive, the clip comes alive. These technologies already exist, okay? The whole idea about travel, right? So walking around Sydney, walking around the Sydney Opera House, I hold up, up my phone, and now I get the concert schedule. I can buy tickets right there without even having to go inside. Or if I'm in Rome and I'm walking back from dinner, and I see a beautiful church, and do I want to adjust my schedule to go to the church the next day? I can now hold up my phone and see the inside of the church to see if it's something I want to do, right? Really exciting stuff, okay? Another exciting area is the whole notion of smart devices. Companies like Samsung are making smart refrigerators. Imagine a world five years from now when, you, when in your calendar you have down that you go gro grocery shopping every Wednesday after work. So when you get up in the morning and you walk past the refrigerator, your fridge, who kn which knows you're going to the store that day, will Bluetooth your grocery list to your phone. You don't even have to look in the fridge to see if you need butter or not. This is less than five years away. Very, very exciting. The whole notion about uh, automobiles and that technology, really, because you know the, the cars are, are, are so much a part of our lives as well, part of our identity. Companies like Ford, and I know Ford isn't a popular uh, company now here in Australia, but Alan Mulally is really doing a lot of wonderful things, where the, the phone will be the center of the, mobile ex with the automotive experience, where you literally will dock your phone in your car, and uh, it will look at your schedule. And if based on real-time traffic, you're going to be late for your appointment, it will send a communique to let them know you're going to be late. Things like that, right? The whole idea of smart devices go well beyond itself. If you remember Minority Report, right, the whole idea of the cars driving themselves and things like that, that is all definitely where we are going. Um, let's see. Oh, and then the whole notion of the individual reach is such, such an important thing. You know, this is my phone, right? If I leave the house with two of my three kids, I don't typically go back. If I forget my phone, I always go back, <laughs> right? It's just the nature of things, right? This is, this is the world, right? Horrible, horrible thing. So, um, you know, so that's the thing. This is individual reach, individual expression, right? 
It's a really, really exciting time. Okay. Now, transmedia. How many of you have heard of the term transmedia? Okay, two, that's good. Three, no, maybe Annalie, because I told her more than once. Uh, so transmedia is a new, it's actually, it is present here in Australia, because I've met several transmedia producers. Transmedia is a new philosophy about storytelling. And in addition to my company, I'm the vice chairman of the Producers Guild, their new media council. And the Producers Guild in 2010 actually coined the term transmedia producer and actually sanctioned with the studios as a legitimate credit in motion pictures. So what transmedia represents is a freedom for storytellers to engage audiences wherever they live in different kinds of storylines. Historically, it's just been spin-offs, but this is really independent storylines around the central IP. And we're going to talk through about how you would create something like that. So you have your central IP, you identify your audience, and then you reach out those stories and those platforms. So for instance, I might not let my 10-year-old son watch Star Wars Episode 3 because I think it's too violent, but I'll let him engage the IP through video, through video games and, and toys, right? It's the whole idea of making things appropriate. If you're creating a campaign or a service that appears to an older demographic, and your research shows that that demographic is in the mobile space, then you're not going to commit budget and resources to a mobile app, right? Know your audience. It's one of the first rules of Hollywood. Know your audience, okay? So the whole idea about uh, transmedia. Now, one thing that you will run into once uh, you talk to people about transmedia is that several people are very anti on the term. They hate the term transmedia. And to some extent that even when you're in meetings and you throw out the word, people will say meeting over, right? It's really interesting. One of the things that I really feel about it is, is that because there's a freedom um, to engage audiences wherever you live, this is the foundation of transmedia, then people should be free to call it whatever they want. And based on my sensibility coming from a traditional entertainment space, I actually call it storytelling through advanced content. Okay? Now one of the things is with the movie studios, when you think about Hollywood and even with the ad agencies, you know, these companies are very siloed in their thinking, right? The traditional, the digital, and all the rest, they're very, very siloed. And very often the digital components of media properties is, is marketing, is considered marketing content. And it's driven creatively from the marketing side. But really what this new world represents, if you really want to engage your audiences, is that there needs to be this fundamental shift of spending production dollars up front instead of marketing dollars after the fact to create this content. Because it allows the cost to come down and it gives you that continuity of storytelling and production value. But one of the big problems that Hollywood has with this is this notion that it takes away budget and headcount for marketing. Those are very tough battles to fight in the boardroom, I can assure you. So again, it's a, it's a really interesting time in terms of how Hollywood's going to respond, as well as the advertising agencies, to this whole notion of this. Okay? All right. So this new digital space, I hypothesize, is a convergence of three things, three things that don't organically mix. Okay? We have the whole notion of traditional media. As I'd said before, each of the studios, they have their silos. Right? You might have an IP that, like The Simpsons is an example with Fox. You have the on-air, you have the gaming, you have the merchandising and things of that nature. Right? They're all very siloed. And in many cases, they don't necessarily collaborate with one another, and definitely in terms of a strategy most often. Okay? Now you have things, uh, whether it's film, TV, gaming, things like that, traditional media, the business we've had, been in all these years. Now, branded advertising. This is the new big thing, right? Everybody has said that the 30-second spot is almost dead. Really, the whole notion of engagement is now coming to all different levels. You see what's being done with American television, with like American Idol, and I'm sure that's the same thing here in Australia with the shows, the whole engagement through mobile content, the notion of second screen experience, the notion of brand reach through Facebook and social networks such as that, uh, SMS marketing, companies like Ralph Lauren, which has been the mobile market of the year for several years, uh, branded devices, and mobile couponing is a huge, huge thing. See, the big thing is, is that when mobile first started, and I've been in it since 2005, it was very much focused on uh, sports for men and gaming for kids. But, you know, in many places, especially in the U.S., mobile um, uh, rich media plans is often a family decision. And it wasn't until there was something for mom that it became a family decision to make the cost, right? So engaging audiences. Is the audience there? Okay. So, and then new technology. The technology is changing all the time. Every new phone you get is going to have two better things. Better battery and more memory, right? Because that's where we're going. This is becoming a laptop, okay? More and more in that nature. But then it's also storytelling uh, through the mobile devices. So, for instance, the first mobile uh, feature film was actually shot with a phone in South Africa in 2005. There's three National Geographic shows that are shot on a phone, right? It's a wonderful, easy way 
to capture and tell stories, right? You don't need a whole big production crew, okay? The device allows you to do it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about the Academy Awards, and there's many, many photographs that are on the Oscar website that actually came from this phone right here because it's just as good as a professional camera, okay? Um, and then obviously gaming. Gaming technology is a very big thing and a big priority and a big business for a lot of the studios, okay? All right. Now, storytelling through brands. So I really feel that this emerging platform space is very much like TV in 1948, where because it was an immature audience, right, this audience that's growing, brands have an opportunity to come in and be a very big part of it. You know, branded content has been this term for a while, and very often it's just a label on the package. You have to really dig deep, right? And this is one of the instances where the advertising sensibility can serve us very well. The whole notion of digging within the brand brief. Because if you have two different beers or whatnot, they would consider themselves very different brands, right? In their targeting, in their messaging. It's a very specific thing that they go after. But Hollywood doesn't necessarily think that way, right? So it's the whole idea about digging in with the brands. Now, you're going to see there's no brands up there. It's all advertising agencies. Because right now, they are still the gatekeeper, right? That's the big thing. The agencies are the big gatekeeper. Although very often, if you see something that's cutting edge and innovative, if you look at a company like Pepsi, very often those companies are driving those things themselves. You find one person there that can really jump in and do some great stuff and do some great inroads to trust the audience. You also have a lot of instances where agencies come together and they create these campaigns and they can't find audiences. And they literally will hire kids in Michigan that do YouTube videos who for some reason have a million YouTube subscribers to tell the studios how to reach a greater audience because for some reason they found it, right? It's an amazing thing. Studios with all these resources don't necessarily have the reach, okay? Build it and they will come is that, that time in our history is over. You have to go to them, okay? All right. And the branded space. The branded space is a very big active space, right? It's a global space, but at the end of the day, it's really driven by 10 companies, really. But it's an exciting time because the whole idea about brand, um, brand identity, brand community is such a big part of it. Because this is, a real, this, this is one of the most important things, I think, is that as we create these content and create these conversations, it's three things you have to focus on. Content, conversation, community it is so important. It is not just about creating content. It's about creating content that sparks a conversation, digging in and then creating a community. Because what comes out of a community? Trust. And through that trust, you're able to have a dialogue, you're able to influence, right? Okay. All right. You know, and then it's all about the new collaborations, right? The new collaborations are going to make the big milestones. Never in my time when I worked at the Fox Network did I ever deal with ad agencies. It was always done at a very high level, even though you would try to do brand integration. We had this uh, 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 new drama once, and it was set in England. And there was an episode where the girl, the beautiful girl who was the star of the show, was going to learn how to drive in England. Okay? So of course it's on the wrong side of the road, just like here in Australia, and isn't this cute, and her British boyfriend's going to teach her. And so they got Ford to sponsor it, right? They got Ford to sponsor this episode. And so uh, when the episode came in, they filmed the scene at night, and the car was black. So you couldn't even see that it was a Ford car. <laughs> because creatively, there was no one there really saying, like, what are we trying to do with this? Now, you have a lot of new American shows, like um, Hawaii Five-0, if you watch that show. Chevy's very involved with that, GM. And you'll see every car flying through there is, is GM. The brightest thing on the screen is that Chevy logo. So good for them, right? OK? But it really is the new collaborations. Don't think that you that, that anyone can say no, right? Bring people together and try to find new models. That's the big, big thing. Because each of these is very active in the digital space, right? You can go directly to Nike Mobile and do something. If you're going to create content around a brand, you don't have to put it on YouTube. You don't have to put it on ABC's website. You can create your own website. Or you can put it wherever you want to put it. Because there's no standardization yet. That's one of the biggest things. There's no standardization for content creation, for content budgets, for length of content, right? Even though the big thing is that nobody knows yet if content has to be on every day to bring you back. That's another big thing, right? Because we haven't figured it out yet. And the industry certainly hasn't figured it out. Even though the audience is out there playing around with it every day. Every new thing that comes out, they try it, right? And every five-year-old that gets a tablet for Christmas is now in the space. No longer waiting until they get out of college. They're there, right? So that's a very exciting thing. But it's all about trying to figure out the new models. Right? And again, with the media companies, the studios, you know, there's, it's, 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 you've still got these siloed companies, and there's still a lot of dinosaurs. 
And what I always like to say is that for this new digital world we're all going to thrive in, a lot of dinosaurs have to die. And unfortunately, the winter hasn't gotten cold enough yet. <laughs> that is one of the big problems, OK? So, OK, so new collaborations, right? Whether it's in business, media, marketing, advertising, all right? So the Oscars. So yes, as uh, Nathaniel mentioned, one of my uh, uh, projects I get to spend, I'm very honored to spend time with, is the Academy Awards. Um, uh, as one would think, it is obviously a very, um, uh, it's a brand that people are aware of. It has a rich history, 85 years. Uh, there's a great legacy piece to it. It's got a huge amount of cast of characters, right? So then the challenge is, how do you create a dialogue around it, right? How do you give everything context? It's, it's a big challenge, and what's interesting with this is, is that um, the ABC company, the Disney ABC company and the Motion Picture Academy, have really put their hearts and minds behind trying to build out a digital experience, even though you would think, and critics would say, that the Academy is, is very antiquated. But really, three years ago, they started the Oscar Backstage Pass, which was a multi-platform uh, um, mobile experience where there would be 24 cameras on the red carpet allowing you to engage the entire Oscar experience whatever you want to, right? So this is a really exciting thing, using technology to help tell a story, to reach an audience in whichever way they wanted. So now for me working on the project, it's also a great opportunity now to try to build out brand extensions, right? How do you bring branded content to the space? You know, and that's really an exciting time. Uh, the Academy and ABC have a relationship till 20, through 2020. So imagine, where's the digital space going to be then? Where is it going to be in 2015? There are so many great opportunities, right? Grabbing audiences, reaching audiences, right? Giving everything context. Content, conversation, community is such a key thing, OK? And it's all about being able to build that community and have that trust so you can have that dialogue, have that conversation, right? Traditional media, branded advertising technology. They are not going to gel organically, right? Because traditional media and branded advertising are worlds based in fear. Why do they cancel TV shows after two episodes? Why are, why are agencies not necessarily willing to embrace digital campaigns? Because the problem is, is that if that campaign is a success, it will take budget from print and on air. Or if it's a failure and it actually gets to the brand and they try to do it, then it could put the account at risk. And in these times, companies can't survive if you lose major accounts, right? But, but technology is different. Technology is based in science. And if the science is good, there's no fear. That's why Bill Gates and Steve Jobs can get up there all day long and say, this will change the world. Because they know, right? They know their audience, and they keep the message simple. Apple, for as complex as it is, is a very simple brand. It's get in there and embrace it. You know what I mean? That's why early adopters love that stuff, OK? All right. Um, and again, the Academy Awards, like I said, you have this great legacy piece. You have all the archival content. The Academy has all this wonderful archival content. How do you give that context? One of the highest rated moments in the show, in the telecast, is the in memoriam, believe it or not. And one of the interesting things about the in memoriam is, is that the, the, the television broadcast only has time to acknowledge 36 people in the show. Although the Academy would, would acknowledge there's over um, 120 of notable people that die in a given year. So what I did two years ago is I actually went to the Academy and said, well, let's find a way to help serve your audience, create content, and build a conversation around the celebration of notable people's lives. So what we did is we created a gallery on the website that would launch the minute, that would launch on the website the minute uh, that segment aired in the telecast that would acknowledge all 120 people of note that died. So that, that gallery that we had on Oscar.com actually had millions and millions and millions of page views in just seven days because there was so much there. It was such a great, wonderful thing. And the Academy loved it. That's one of the things that, that actually drew me to digital. Um, in 1999, when I was an executive at the Fox Network, this is at a time when television shows were having a harder, harder time with on-air promotion time. It was such a delicate space. It was so much, so much delicate real estate. There are TV shows they wouldn't give one five-second promotion to, right? But I saw the potential of the web as a platform to engage audiences wherever you could. Now, this is still something that's been good and in some ways has been bad. You know, why is there no monetization in the web? Because the freedom that the web provides takes away the focus of eyeballs. And it's the focus of eyeballs that's the monetization of television. There is no Super Bowl in the web. That's part of the problem. That's why people aren't making money, right? 
Whereas the mobile space, because of the infrastructure, having the carriers, having the manufacturers, things like that, there's a greater potential for us to find these new revenue streams. It's not about saving the money that we've all been leaking. It's about finding the new money, the new models. And it's going to evolve because the audience is growing at a, at a, a crazy pace. The technology is growing. It's a moving train, right? It's not like um, how it was. My mother tells stories about how people came to the house and knocked on the door and said, what's that up on the roof? And it was the television antenna, because they were the first one on the block to have a television. It's not like that anymore, right? It's constantly in motion. How do we keep up? How do we stay ahead of it all, right? Now, there's futurists that are way up here with their thinking. This is where we're going. We're going to be up here. It's no big deal at all. Your audience is still down here, right? You've got to, as a storyteller, if you're going to apply a, a, technolog a technology component to your storytelling, you have to understand your audience and you have, to have, you have to develop different layers of digital integration. Because different buyers and distributors have a different digital footprint. That's the other big thing, because there is no standardization. Okay? But again, it is a very exciting time. Because the thing is, is for people that are willing to do it, people that are willing to transform themselves, right, is that it's a time to write the rules as you go and break them along the way. Because in many cases, you've got all of these people that are sitting on the floor, scared in a dark room, and they're afraid to reach for the white switch. And once this light switch goes on, they're all going to realize they're all going to live. They're all going to realize there's enough money for everybody to make and that, we're, that the world's going to go on. But it's going to evolve, and it's coming quickly. So it's a very exciting time, as I've said. Okay? So my company's called BunnyGraph, and I just want to say this really quickly because I'm going to tell a story, very, you know, whatnot. So my grandfather, who was a um, combat photographer in the First World War, immigrated to the United States and was a, started his photography studio. And in the Depression in Chicago, when there weren't, wasn't a lot of money for studio photographers, the only people that could afford studio photographer were literally gangsters. So, of course, my grandma didn't want any part of that. And so what he did is he uh, focused his business on, a, um, on, ch on children, right, photographing children. Because in immigrant cities like Chicago, you couldn't call the grandparents in Hungary and say the kids are okay. You'd send a picture postcard. And so what he did is he patented this giant rabbit that went over the camera and the lens came out of the stomach, and the baby always looked at the rabbit. The baby looked at the rabbit in 1928, and the baby looked at the rabbit in 1968. So two weeks after I was born, he took me to the studio, took my picture, said that's the last picture I'm going to take and sell the business. And 25 years later, I brought the company back. And, that's, and my logo is his logo from 1928. Why? Because what served him very well is exactly what I try to evangelize in the digital space today. Know your audience. Keep it simple. Okay. So again, I just want to instill on you the notion of content. Conversation, community. That's what it's all about. That's where you get the trust. That's where you can really engage people and transform. Thank you very much.